Welcome back to Mage Wars. I'm Alan Gerding. We're now at round four of the walkthrough. Again, if you haven't seen rounds one, two, or three, don't just jump in at round four. You'll probably want to start at the beginning, otherwise you may be a little lost. But with that being said, let's continue our epic battle between the Beastmaster and the Warlock. Round four. Round four, ready stage. Initiative phase. The Beastmaster gives the initiative marker back to the Warlock. Reset phase. All the action and quick cast markers are flipped over. Channel phase. Each mage adds nine to their mana supply. The Beastmaster now has 22 mana. The Warlock now has 14. Once the channel phase is over, but before the upkeep phase begins, the Warlock reveals his hidden Ghoul Rot enchantment. He pays six mana, bringing his supply down to nine. Now, the Ghoul Rot has a mage bound trait, and it has a mage bound trait of two mana. That means that normally when attaching it to a creature, the Ghoul Rot would only cost four mana. But because he's binding it to a mage, it costs two additional mana. So instead of paying four mana, the Warlock is now paying six mana for the revealing cost. This brings his supply down to nine. Upkeep phase. This time, both the Beastmaster and the Timberwolf have to roll for their burn tokens. The Wolf rolls another two. Now it has seven damage on it and is getting very close to death. The Beastmaster has better luck. He rolls a miss, which means not only does he take no damage from the burn token, but that burn token is also removed from play. Unfortunately, the Beastmaster still suffers from the Ghoul Rot, which does two direct damage. This brings his damage total up to four. Planning phase. The Beastmaster returns his unused minor heal to his spell book. The Warlock wants to even up the odds a little, so what he does is he prepares a small attack called Flame Blast and another Firebrand Imp. Meanwhile, the Beastmaster prepares for the worst and he selects his other Timberwolf and his Cobra Reflexes enchantment spell. Action stage. First quick cast phase. Yet again, both mages choose to hold their quick cast actions for later. Warlock action phase. Normally the Warlock would have to activate himself since it's his turn, but because the Beastmaster has more active creatures on the board than he does, the Warlock may choose to pass, giving him a chance to see what the Beastmaster has planned. He decides to pass, for now. Beastmaster Action Phase The Beastmaster could use his Staff of Beasts to heal the wounded Timberwolf, but he decides that it would be more efficient to simply summon an extra one. He activates his Beastmaster and casts the second Timberwolf spell for 9 mana. That brings his mana supply total down to 13. Then, just in case the Warlock gets any funny ideas, he uses his quick cast action to cast Cobra Reflexes on the newly summoned wolf, keeping it hidden for now and paying only the two mana hidden cost. Warlock action phase. This time, the Warlock must take an action since he and the Beastmaster now have an equal number of active creatures, one each. An evil grin twists his visage as he gets a nasty idea. He activates himself and casts his Firebrand Imp for five mana. His total is now three mana. He chooses not to use his quick cast this round at all. He's saving his mana for something bigger. Beastmaster action phase. The Beastmaster doesn't want to commit his wounded wolf to battle before he can heal it. He activates the creature, but chooses not to move before he takes a quick action to go on guard. He places a guard token on the wolf, which will now try to defend its zone against the Warlock's forces. Round five, ready stage. Initiative. The Beastmaster has initiative again, so he takes the token from the Warlock. Reset. All action and quick cast tokens are flipped up. Channel. Both mages add their channeling to their mana supplies. The Beastmaster now has 20, 
and the Warlock now has 12 mana in his mana supply. Upkeep. The Beastmaster automatically takes two damage from the Ghoul Rod again, up to six. The Timberwolf rolls for its burn marker one more time. One. It takes one damage, bringing its total to eight. Planning. The Warlock returns his unused Flame Blast spell to his spellbook. The Beastmaster is thinking defensively this round, so he takes a minor heal and a dispel. The Warlock, on the other hand, decides it's time to attack. He chooses Firestorm and Chains of Agony. Action Stage. First quick cast phase. The Beastmaster is worried about how badly his wolf is damaged, so he uses his quick cast action now to cast his minor heal spell. He pays the five mana cost, which now brings his mana supply down to 15, and he rolls five attack dice. Hmm, not a great roll. Healing ignores critical hits and armor. It simply reduces the amount of damage on the target by the value rolled on the dice. So the wolf heals three damage, reducing its total damage down to five. Now the warlock has a chance to use his quick cast action. He decides to save his quick cast for later in the round. Beastmaster action phase. Since he has the initiative, the Beastmaster has to activate a creature. He decides to activate himself so he can cast his Dispel. He does not like taking damage every turn, so he needs to get rid of that Ghoul Rot enchantment that the Warlock had put on him. Dispel costs X mana, with X being the total casting cost of the target face-up enchantment. Since he's targeting Ghoul Rot, that total is 8. He pays 8 mana, reducing his mana supply total down to 7. Both the Dispel and the Ghoul Rot are discarded from play. Warlock action phase. Now is the moment to strike, and strike hard. The Warlock reveals his spell, Firestorm. It's a full action spell, so he can't move and cast it in the same turn. But the Warlock doesn't mind. He pays the 11 mana cost, reducing his total to one mana. Firestorm is a zone attack spell. That means that it attacks every legal target in the entire zone. The Warlock rolls a separate attack against each target, one at a time. He starts with the Wounded Timberwolf. Because of the Mark for Death spell, he rolls plus one attack dice for a total of six dice. What does he get? Boom! A massive hit. Even after he subtracts the Wolf's two armor, he does a total of eight damage, more than enough to destroy it. The now Crispy Wolf and both attached enchantments are all discarded. Now it's time for the other wolf. The Beastmaster would love to use the hidden Cobra Reflexes enchantment to protect the wolf, but Firestorm is an unavoidable attack, which means that defenses can't be used against it. It would be pointless for him to use Cobra Reflexes at this point. The Warlock rolls five dice this time, and this is what he gets. The wolf only takes a single point of damage. Worse yet, the effect die roll was only a three, so it doesn't even catch on fire. That lucky wolf must have been hiding behind the Beastmaster when the spell went off. But finally, the Warlock rolls his attack against the Beastmaster. He does a little better this time. The Beastmaster still has no armor, so he takes four damage, up to 10 now. Even better, the effect I was in 11, the Beastmaster must take two burn markers. Now that the Firestorm is done, the spell is discarded. Beastmaster action phase. The Beastmaster's plan hasn't gone well this turn. But now is not the time to change. He activates the Timberwolf and puts it on guard. Warlock action phase. Time to follow through, the Warlock thinks to himself as he activates his Firebrand Imp. He moves it up one zone and attacks with its quick melee attack. He wants to attack the Beastmaster, of course, but there's an enemy guard in the zone. When a creature makes a melee attack in a zone with an enemy guard, he must attack the guard, even if he doesn't want to. Before the imp has a chance to swing at the wolf though, the Beastmaster reveals the trick up his sleeve, the Cobra Reflexes enchantment spell. He pays the five mana reveal cost. This reduces his mana supply total to two. The Cobra Reflexes is then marked with a face-up ready marker. Cobra Reflexes gives the wolf a defense, a chance to negate an attack completely. 
The wolf rolls the effect die and gets a 9. Since he rolled equal to or higher than the number on the shield on the Cobra Reflexes card, the imp's attack is completely negated. The imp doesn't roll any attack dice. He doesn't even get to roll for the secondary effect, the burn. The Cobra Reflexes defense can only be used once per round, and this is shown by the X1 at the bottom of the shield. So the Beastmaster flips the ready marker to the U side. If the wolf were somehow attacked again this round, he couldn't use the Cobra Reflexes to save itself. It's already been used. There's more bad news waiting for the Firebrand Imp though. Because the Timberwolf has a guard marker, it gains the Counter Strike trait on its quick melee attack. Since the Imp just attacked it, even though the attack was negated by Cobra Reflexes, the Wolf gets to make a free attack. He rolls four attack dice and this is what he gets. A paltry hit. The Imp takes only a single point of damage. Since the Timberwolf has attacked, its guard marker is removed. A guard only gets to block one attack before it loses its guard marker. In this way, an attacker can use small attacks to tie up the defender's guards to clear the way for a target he really wants to attack. After five rounds of intense fighting, the outcome is still very much in doubt. The Beastmaster has suffered quite a bit of damage and quite a bit more than the Warlock, but the Warlock has expended two of his most powerful spells and has almost no mana. Will the Beastmaster's forest friends ultimately let triumph? or will the Warlock's diabolical schemes bear fruit in the end? Find out for yourself when you step into the arena with Mage Wars.